I'm not jumping the gun. The calls to order six thirty one. Maybe great. our most efficient launch ever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> six thirty one call to order public comments. Our second item. Any remote or live or through co directors public comments? No. No. Okay, we're moving along. Um, the uh, minutes of February 27 are attached. Um, please peruse them for uh, corrections mm -hmm. and un any unclarity. This is not an yeah, we're okay to go back. We're okay to go back. I'm sorry? There you go. We get some news from the remote. Where anybody? I heard some. I heard somebody say go back, but I don't see any picture of anybody talking, so I don't know. I thought I saw CJ's outline, so maybe she wasn't on mute. Yeah. Oh, she was just picking up. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna try to try to uh, get through this agenda then. Um, I there no one is asking me to return to the public comment. Sounds like that's a no. Um, what I was saying is please just read this the minutes for uh corrections. It's not an opportunity to discuss the content of it. If your memory's jog, save it for all business. But this is purely just approving the minutes if they accurately capture what we did on the 27th. So uh, natural inclination to get into the conversations about the content, it's not happening now. Um, so please take a minute. We'll go quiet and um, we'll entertain uh, amendments, fixes. <clears throat> and perhaps it's so clean with Chad as our, our secretary, then we can also entertain a motion to accept or move to approve, I should say. I make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Got, I second it. We got a motion to approve. Um, Pat seconded by David. There's a. Uh, you click something, Chad? Yeah, it looks like in C, in 4C, I have the, looks like a beginning of a sentence. It says Christopher Beersima, Clara. I can clarify it, I think. Clarified. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I started to type clarified, maybe. Mm -hmm. He says I was looking for clarity. And so he did something, maybe. He just okay. did clarity. All right. <laughs> uh, he pulled clarity out of his head. Is that just finishing that yeah. word, or is there a clarified? I don't, da, da, da. I don't think there was any information. <clears throat> okay. So word finish. Yeah. Clarified has been added to the record. Thank you. And we do have a, a motion to approve and a second. People feel as though we could done their, had time to do their due diligence. I can call the question. I am hearing no requests for further time. Oh, found it. Found it. New business. My name is spelled correctly until the bitter end. Mm -hmm. F E A. M I C H A E L. You wrote my name five or six times. No, it's just that one fix. Um, all right, going once and twice and three times on any little little heavy catches like I just made, um, or I will, which is first and second on the table. Um, all those in favor of. Which one is the one that's missed? Oh, the very last line F got worse in the right. <laughs> New oh. business F. 
There we go. Um, with two minor changes, all those in favor of um, approving the February 27th minutes, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, that is a uh, unanimous consent on the minutes. Uh, is that actually me? Is that someone calling the club home? With is it? Is public calling everybody? Everybody? Calling everyone. Yeah. She told me she's got a virtual meeting tonight. Well, we've got a meeting ourselves, yeah. Becca. And we're not calling you. <laughs> uh, next up. And I you know, should probably mark me as an abstention just because uh, as a not present person, I can't really approve the minute. But other than that. All right. <clears throat> Sorry for missing it last week. Or last month, rather. So, what do I call that then? If it's not unanimous approval, this is the first time I've ever had that. It's one abstention. Approval with one abstention. With only right. one. Abstention. That's correct. All approved. Only one abstention. Uh, we're moving on to financial reports. Now, BCJ and Jim and whichever capacity they have chosen. Mm -hmm. CJ, did you have a report that you wanted to give? So maybe what I'll do is I'll, the air, be great. I'll just um so the financials at the beginning and it hasn't um really changed I think we were we're still planning on being a little bit over on salaries and it's in the co-directors report as well um just because it's still legislative season I think we and we're hoping to reduce that amount when the season ends so I think outside of that we're on target for everything else we've been really good of kind of watching that and um so, and I think also the compensation is going to be a little bit over just because we're paying out Christopher's PTO and that's always a chunk of change usually. So that's also happening in April rather than, um, and so I think his last check was also in April rather than in May. So things are a little bit shifted and it'll be a little bit more in April, but um, I mean, it, we are expecting to be over. And I think um, then we may have a little bit more money or a space in the budget on the compensation side because we'll be down a person so that will also will we expect to see that and hopefully we'll um I increase some of the hours of one of the camera operators that have been doing some um, post-production work so that may also help so we may have some shifting but I would expect that there would be some some savings just in like I would imagine like the next month in benefits and compensation just because we're losing a full-time staff and um, outside of that, I think it's, you know, it's pretty been pretty quiet on the financial side. So we're doing okay. Mm -hmm. Jen, just a quick question from CJ. Why would the CTO affect things since that should be accrued and already boiled in? I think it's in terms of getting the money actually hitting the books. So it's always just been like, not quite, it's just, it's accrued and we get used and it gets paid like it's just part of the regular salary. So it's not an extra amount that you normally see. But when you pay out the CTO, it'll be a, like, I think, you know, extra days that maybe you want, it would be over the salary amount. So I think, but with Christopher's, it's, mm, it, will it be, should be part of the salary. It, it's CTO should not be in addition to. It is part of, yeah. it is showing up in the compensation line. And so in terms of the budget amount, like the budget doesn't have the, um, because it could be, I think, year. So it's not necessarily, it may be over than what is budgeted for that pay period. So it could be, and it's also this pay period would have ended. So for April, the next paycheck would have been in May, but because we all paid it out this time around before the, and so that's also where, that salary amount is showing up in this month rather than next month. So yeah. that's where that amount is more. But in terms of like, if we put the, I don't know that we put the 
PTO numbers that amount in the budget outside of just like our salary amount. And generally we're taking it. And so we're not paying out or like you would, it would kind of net out zero in that weird way that if I took a day off, I still get my entire salary. So then my PTO goes down. But oftentimes like Zach and I have accrued it. And so we have like, theoretically, if we were to leave and we paid out all our PTO, we have like 320 hours that isn't actually showing up in like a physical monetary amount in the budget. It's always just kind of been there so that we yeah. would use it. So that's where I think, so oftentimes like, so with this one, it's primarily that he would have been, everything would have been in May because the next pay period shows up in the May numbers, but it's gonna show up in April numbers. What is the company policy? I've been in parts of companies where it's use it or lose it. I mean, people who work and don't take their PTO can, you know, so we, we need to just, I think all I need to do is understand better. And I think the board should understand better what the policy is, because otherwise, uh, if you're accruing PTO and it's not required to take it inside a certain period of time and you don't lose it, then it's effectively an increase in salary. I have an option to take time off. Hold organizations like that as well, but I believe, Jen, I so I think we're following the policy. The policy has been that we accrue and then we max out at 320, 320 hours. And after an employee, a staff hits that amount, they no longer accrue anymore. So that, um, and so that's the most that theoretically someone could, have, a staff could have and use, and then they wouldn't be accruing. But as soon as you start to go under that amount, you start reoccurring, mm -hmm. accruing, not reoccurring. <laughs> CJ, did you hear our request for a treasurer's report earlier? It was quiet when we, we checked in with you. I, I did. It was CJ and Jin, and so then Jin stepped up, and uh, which I appreciate. So cool. didn't realize. Uh, sorry, I, I, you did say treasurer's, and I apologize, I think. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, just, just went to fill the dead air. I just, I, we weren't oh, sure my goodness. if you were there or not. So, yep, no, so I was I, there. <clears throat> So I think it's this is done. I mean, PT requiring use it or lose it is for organizations where they have employees, people that don't take their time off when they should be taken in, and then and then they accrue it. Right? Is that correct? Well, I mean, the reason to do that is to kind of force people to take it on time whenever they can. Is yes. That right. So I guess often I've been with groups also mm -hmm. where the user lose it at that set time is like a year, right. and I think I've right. been where if you didn't use it in that year, then you lost it, but then you started the next year with a whole that same amount, a new amount, the same for that year. So you're supposed to use say like 30 days for the year. And if you didn't use 30 days, you lost it. But then July 1st, you had 30 days all over again. So I don't, that would be the other yeah. type of policy of a use it, lose it. Now ours is more of like, if you don't use it, you stop accruing it rather than losing it. But you are kind of losing you can it. Top out, but it, right. and it's so you lose it by right. yeah, what yeah. When is the cap? Three hundred and twenty hours. Three hundred twenty hours. Two hundred and twenty. I think she said. Did you 300, say two hundred and twenty? Three hundred and twenty. Three two zero. You have a cap of three hundred and twenty hours. Three hundred twenty hours divided by forty is uh, eight. You you can you can accrue eight months. You have a you have eight months. You have you have yeah. That means no, you have an. Oh, sorry, did I? So I was like, it comes out to be no forty. It's it's eight weeks, right? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. That's... Three hundred twenty hours is eight weeks. That's two months of paid time off a year. That means effectively anybody who's not taking that has an eighteen percent salary jump. Uh, are you sure that's the corporate policy? I'm sorry, say that again, CJ. I just want to confirm that the corporate policy is you you can if you don't take your time off, you get an extra eighteen percent salary every year. You don't get it if you don't use it. That's what Jim's no, saying. but if you don't but if you don't take the time off and then you demand your C your CTO payment at, at the, the end of the year, then organization. Yeah. yeah. So at the point of leaving the organization, that would only be a one-time payout. Correct. Uh, it's 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 
it, it's it's a it just it's a little bit of a budget buster. It's the most generous P, uh, PTO policy that I'm familiar with in in the U.S. In Europe, it's a little bit different, but we're a, we're we're an American so, nonprofit company. Uh, it's a, it, it, it is what it is. If that's what it is, can, and if it's been in there, I'm absolutely fine. I just I, I was we, unaware of it. Can we make a note of this and then later on look into this at some point? Like put it as a note. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. To see. You. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, cool. Okay. Um. Eight hours. Oh, and hours. where is the policies manual for the the HR policies recorded? Employee handbook. It's our employee handbook. Okay. Perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. And I can email you that um, the employee handbook, CJ, if you want. Cool. I mean, again, this is, I know I'm sounding all like what, but I, this isn't an objection. It's more of a financial, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it creates a pretty substantial change depending on how many employees you have to the potential financial impact on the company. Uh, it just is it, something that I hadn't even realized we needed to plan for. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Glad to know about it. So am I doing my math wrong here? That's that's two months of potential um accrual. No, your math your math is right. That's okay. two months that's a potential eighteen percent bump eight on everybody's eight salary. salary. But but that's yeah. that's included, CJ, and I don't know if this is right or wrong. I haven't thought about it. It's included in vacation and sick days. I haven't seen the employee handbook. Jen, do you know? That's a good question. Oh, it so is. The, it's a, go ahead. Oh, sorry. So the PTO is sick, vacation, PTO, and holidays. It's is all combined in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have. So it depends on how much like vacation people have accrued, um, and it's and you use it for anything. You just say, "I'm taking a PTO day." Um, but it's for all those things Jim mentioned. So it's all lumped into hmm. one. It's not just vacation. It's sick days. Um, uh, line mm -hmm. item of sick days or vacation. Yeah. And holidays. Right. And right. Holidays. Yeah. It's, and it's holidays. all holding, yeah. And that's, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. I mean, shouldn't be news to anyone, but no. I, and you know, I, I, will I, say, I this is fairly standard. I know 40 is a number that rings a bell from my former HR days. Okay. Um, and people really love it because if you're young and not sick, you get a lot of vacation Correct. time. That's if you're old say. like me, you use the you use it yeah. for a sick. So it works out. This it's goes. a real positive thing if it works well. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. The Pat, what was it when, at most of the companies where you were at HR? What were what were the number that of was weeks? Forty of... rings a bell, CJ, but I I wouldn't yeah. swear on it. But that rings a bell. I think it's fairly common considering the whole ball of wax that it represents yeah yeah i just i've never seen eight weeks before but um maybe in really really but uh that's it but it is you know it's like if we've been operating that way eight weeks is working what you top out at though just to just to clarify eight yeah. weeks is what you have oh, okay. to prove to that point yeah so you're not starting with eight weeks that would be Fair quite enough. a two oh, right, yeah. right. You start but most people it. start out with two weeks when you come in, and then in like three years you right. might get three yeah, weeks, and then four years. Yeah, exactly. If you but join the company, and here. we can hear about other people's policies and share them here, but we have a policy here that we can actually operate off of. And I fully trust that Jen has. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We're not trying to change anything. We're trying to understand well, it. Ten different and HR and policies right now, and it would not move the conversation forward. Yeah. Right. Yep. I and agree with that. We, we go and return to this. Yeah. And all the policies have a cap like okay. we do. So that's fairly standard. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. Good questions, though. Yep. So just to be clear, though, so the moment you join ORCA, do you get up to eight weeks of paid time off? No. According no. to the manual? It's, it's mm -hmm. a sliding scale, isn't it? Mm -hmm. no. No, you, no. You get it. 
I don't mm -hmm. remember the scale, but you only get a certain number on your first year. And then the second year, you it increases a little bit. So right. it does increase. So and gradually. You keep, yes. So it's not that you get the full eight weeks, but Zach and I have been here probably enough, long enough that with yeah. all our time off, and it just has capped out that way. I'm all for long-term employees having really good PTO, et cetera. You know, you've shown your commitment to the company. So that's just my personal two cents worth. Okay, thank you very much for taking the time to address these questions. I really appreciate it. We haven't gotten the treasurer's report. Excuse me. DJ, you still there? CJ? I am still here. Sorry about that. I could hear you. I had a I had a recalcitrant device. Uh, uh, Dave, so asked if accept the, Dave asked if we could accept the financial reports, and I let him know we 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 don't have the yep. treasurer report yet. Yeah, so very briefly on the treasurer side, um, I have sent an email and put in a request to Mark Quinn for a current picture of our financials and also added a request to be able to do online login so that we're not dependent on him for the financials. Uh, Pat and I had an exchange. We have not heard yet on the from, back from any of the companies to which Pat wonderfully wrote um, a great letter and so we have a slightly updated letter that we're going to be sending out now that the tax season that the big push to get you know the april 15th deadline done for these firms right. is over and i think that is my treasurer's yeah. report for the moment and, and just to add to that if i may the individual i was talking to gave me a couple of other names of they, she just said that it was when we sent it out was just bad timing and we're too small for them to pay attention when it's in the middle of tax season and right after COVID mm. and blah, blah, blah. So we're going to send it out first week of May with a revised letter to a longer list um, of of some local auditors. So we should get a response, I would hope. Yep. Okay. So, so and I, uh, I do expect, I do, uh, go ahead, Mike. I'm just, I, when I was looking at the February 27th meeting that you abstained from because you weren't there, um, I, just, I had just inquired at that meeting of whether the changes to the Edward Jones account had been initiated. And I emailed you mm -hmm. earlier in the week just trying to get a sense of um, the approvals that we've made so that you can um, move into different accounts. If you could report back if any of that's happened. Correct. So, no, none of that has happened. Thank um, you. I have. Yeah. Yep. Nope. <laughs> I'm uh, it's part of the my reason also for requesting that we have the ability to do online access to view our account situations. Um, and I'm not sure if the, that made two requests to email us the status of Orca's you know current account balances, et cetera. The first one I got back was we're not able to do that. I did not get a good answer to why. And uh, so you know hopefully I hear back in the next day or two from Stephanie or Mark at Edward Jones. That doesn't sound good. They're very responsive in person, and our situation's simple enough that I'm not worried. But I do think that it's going to be important for us simply to be able to log in the people who are, you know, are on the accounts, be able to log in and just get a picture. That's just like the state of our investments. That's right. Just a read-only picture of what our investment situation looks like and what the returns are on the things we're in. Um, so, Mike, you and I should at least should be able to get that picture whenever we want. Sure, that's a snapshot as opposed to, like, actually making changes. There was some talk that our portfolio was a little dated, and we've been through this, hey, let's get uh, out of that one um, fund – is it American? It's been so long. That's ago. correct. The, Ameri the American Fund family. Funds, but it's 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 feeling like old news now, and I don't I don't even have the the um, language at my at the tip of my tongue. That's but, correct. The American Fund uh, is what we're locked into now. I we had 
discussed and that a year remains ago. True. That remains true. That remains true. That's, That's what correct. I'm it's conservative. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. Yep. So a year ago, uh, we had bought, gotten a go, and uh, other Mike had gone into the office and signed off, and uh, and I was talking to you, and uh, you had felt that it was not the right time. And then a couple of board meetings ago, I made a pitch again, and the board said, "Yes, go ahead and do yeah, that." Yeah, that 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 summer, I I I was good with the timing. I, it's just Mark said, unless we know what we're doing. It expires after 30 or 60 days. So let's not put the cards before the horse. So I was like, okay, great. CJ and Mark can sit down and build a plan. That's just, I'm understanding that is yet to happen. And I'm just, well, just it, yeah. And the reason is that in Mark's statement, you know, as we discussed in that board meeting, I found Mark's statement, unless you know what you're doing, to be confusing because, you know, markets change. And part of the reason we wanted the flexibility is to be able to be more responsive to the markets at a time when they were a, a little different. Um, and that continues to be the case. Uh, we're at, you know, the interest rates have peaked, we hope. Um, and that means we'll have a whole other stuff. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on in financing that's brand new and the effect of a artificial intelligence on markets is, you know, is, is emerging and so, when Mark was like, you need to have a plan and know exactly what you're doing. I'm like, that that kind of defeats the purpose of of doing Yeah, I think it, it was so. just a question of like it being summer and that once you opened it, it expired unless you used it. That's yeah, I don't know. Started. Anyways, that's water under the bridge. We we revisited it. The board agreed to to move forward, and uh, and so we're going to go ahead and do that. And again, I will expect a middle, you know, between meetings email. Um, just giving people a quick financial picture. And, uh, you know, as I said, I've augmented my request to Mark and Stephanie to please help us set up online access. I don't quite understand why that has been difficult, but we'll get it done. Okay, great. Um, questions or motion? Were you, Dave, were you were chomping at the bit to motion to approve? Or? Yeah, I would thought we were going to approve the financial reports. So are you turning that into a motion? I moved that we Dave has that. so moved that we accept the financial report. And is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Pat. Um, all those in favor of accepting the financial reports, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And that's unanimous. And now we've got um, item number five is co director's report. Coming in at 658, we're doing pretty well. All right. Um, so I, I think heard there's a little bit of news on the co director triumvirate front. I don't know if that's the <laughs> item. I'm sure I could just speak to that really quick before we jump into it. Um, for those of you that are not yet aware uh tomorrow is my last day so um i'll be heading out and then um we we did make uh some notes of what's happening with some projects that i was carrying um but yeah we'll speak to that in a moment um but yeah i want to thank you all for everything and it's been it's been great so i'll see you at the, the van meeting maybe next yeah, I know Pat's going. Yeah, I'm going. All right. I saw you on the RSVP. Do you want to share in what capacity you'll be? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll be taking over as the new ED at um, Bad River Valley Television in Waysfield. Perfect. Big congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank is that, you. Is that the guy with all the Elvis hair? The guy with the Elvis hair. Tony you know Italiano? who I'm talking about, Zach? Tony Italiano. Yeah, Tony Italiano. I don't know that he has Elvis hair. Oh, the well, last time I saw him, he had this giant hairdo, and he looked just like Elvis. But he's a very nice guy. Oh, maybe the outgoing executive director, Rob Perry. Oh, maybe is Zach. Elvis do you, you know who I'm talking about? I, I think it's yeah. I think it's Tony Turner. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he yeah. looks like a yeah. Italian guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, You'll have fun down there. Good place. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry. When Christopher leaves, do we, does anybody think to have him do an exit interview? We, we just did, did one. Yeah, we just came from one. Oh, good. I had a cup right. of coffee and, yeah. and a yeah. nice conversation. 
Yeah, thank you for the time. Thank you. Appreciate it. So yeah, maybe I'll pass it over to Zach with production yeah. news, um, and I can speak to some of the outreach stuff too. Um, so the production stuff, as you can see, we had all of the town meetings, which are you know a big thing. These were lots of people out through like the whole day of coverage. Um, then kind of our regular conferences and stuff. But I did real quick want to talk about the eclipse because that was kind of cool. Montpelier Live asked us to live stream it. And of course, everyone is going to be, you know, like Vermont Public and everyone's live streaming it. So we're trying to think of something different to do. So we decided to do like a picture in picture or like a split screen of um, the people watching it and of the actual sun. So we had one camera just on the sun and then just a wide shot of the crowd on the college green. And um, and we weren't sure how many people are going to watch it, but it turned out a lot of out-of-staters were mm -hmm. watching it that weren't in um, totality. So we had hundreds of people watching it as it was happening. So I thought that was really oh, cool. Need 148. That's yeah, awesome. during the live. During it, then we got a lot more after that. I watched it for a little while. Did you? Right over your shoulder up there in the college green. <laughs> <laughs> what are you filming? Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, we decided to do like basically the whole thing. So it was like over two hours of just streaming. So, so that was kind of fun. the comments were actually nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. they're like, "Oh, say hi, I'm from California." Yeah, yeah. stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah. So that was that was pretty cool. Um. So yeah, the town meeting stuff. Then this conferences, the movement starting um streaming the poem cities, poem city events in Montpelier. Um and that's pretty much it. Unless anyone has any questions. what's this high school um play live stream? So they asked us to they got permission to stream a play mm -hmm. live. Um so that was just they can't think of the name of the play off the top of my head. Twelfth night. Yeah, twelfth night. Uh, that, no copyright. Yeah, issues. yeah. yeah. Well, they, they got permission, so it was really nice that they got permissions to be able to stream it. They're used to, even though it's a very, very, very old play, you still. It's mm -hmm. not, yeah. It's mm -hmm. not, it's no mm -hmm. So, but we had to do a private link or uh, unlisted. unlisted. So oh, that's what made everyone happy. Yeah, the and then they could give it to select. So it wasn't. Out to the public, but and what happens with that material now that it's done? I don't think we can. No, we don't get to yeah. be able to air it. So it was. Um, so theoretically, you know, that's something where if more people start to use us, it could be something where we might start charging. You know, since we're not getting that content, yeah. we can yeah, do it. But good, it's yeah. you know, with the high school, they asked, and that we've mm, yeah. been as part of that relationship. But it also comes to like now that we, I think that was. I don't know if we've done some in the past from from my memory it seems like that was like one of the one like times that we actually did a private for live streaming and so it could be like you know another way of bringing in some production revenue yeah. is to so who had access like parents of students and i think they bought tickets or like they like part of their ticket purchase was whether they wanted to watch the live stream instead of maybe coming in. So it was a way that they could also um, right. sell tickets. Yeah. So we helped them generate income. That sounds like going <laughs> forward, that would be a place where we say, yeah, hey, yeah. Well, we mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm, I'm all for supporting, absolutely for supporting, for supporting all this. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I think, well, two things, one, a little, a little fee for just, you know, gear, you know, just maintenance of gear and things like that because it right because of wear and tear. That's one. And the other thing is, you know, well, I think about once the, once it's done, what do you do with the material? Do you destroy it? Do you delete it? I mean, right. So we haven't deleted okay. it. I think you know we'll definitely ask them and say, do you want it? I mean, yeah. they may want a copy of it, and that's just their. Right. Even though it lives on our YouTube, it's their link, and they are the only ones with it. So okay. I can we can reach out to to see what do they want post activity. Yeah. And it could be that, you know, if they do want a copy of it, then I think it's easy enough for us to give and, mm -hmm. but that would be the other 
question to ask if they asked us next. And then item. any of Lo Orca's logos appear during the, you know, the, I don't know that no. it did. I think it was, you know, and maybe that's where it's also like we were just like, oh, so right, next right, time we'll right, ask right. for like, can you put in like a little note at the end of, you know, thanks. Like, yeah, yeah. Although they may have, I don't. I didn't watch the play, so I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. at the end when they said something that they might have said a thank you. And then this Vermont Community Foundation 2023 Hogan Award PSA. Mm -hmm. What that was? Yeah. That was a someone from another station in Middlebury. Um, they had uh, they interview they want to do a really short interview with the person who won the award for this thing and to promote it for to get new applicants or something so it was like a one-off kind of special thing that we did other areas staff wants to highlight or questions from board members oh Um, we all said, yes, um, I'll just mention some of these, uh, exciting things in the outreach area that Green Mountain Film Festival came to a, an end, um, and was a smashing success as I wrote here. So, um, <laughs> sold out shows, lots of great feedback, uh, so fun to see people out carrying the program, wearing the t-shirts, the banners hanging up downtown. It was a lot of fun. Um, Star volunteer Chad really came through when yeah, we had a lot of yeah. technical difficulties at the eleventh hour, and Chad stepped in and showed up, and it was great. And um, yeah, lots of lots of fun. Um, so I think we just wanted to make note that uh, even though I'm I'm leaving Orca Media, the Green Mountain Film Festival uh, will stick with Orca Media as a fiscal sponsor. Um, through the 2025 uh, festival. I think the MOU that we have with the Green Mountain Film Festival is through 2026. Um, and I'll continue on uh, with the leadership team there and continue to uh, make it exciting. So um, the other things, um, questions? Were, was the audience uh, feedback collected at all at the Green Mountain Film Festival? Um, I think there's going to be like a survey. We collected a lot of emails uh, because tickets, you had to put in an email. Um, but it was mostly just like we asked people to uh, get volunteers to get uh, responses and we took a lot of notes. I mean, it was pretty casual, okay. to be honest. Yeah. It was like mostly the consensus was this is really great that this is back, you know, and we're excited mm -hmm. to, that this is back. Great. Yeah, it was pretty much like that was the vibe. With um, Paige Press and the Times Argus, I think. Yeah, there was a lot Carlos's of press. Carlos's panel was featured. On the yeah, mm -hmm. Carlos was great. Uh, Carlos, thank you for your uh, participation. We kicked it off pre-festival event. Mm -hmm. um, the two things that I was, uh, did as a, the two, two events that I facilitated, Carlos was also one of the, the presenters and facilitators. So that was fun, the youth media panel and the film slam uh, Q&A. Yeah, there were so many like little things too. I'm forgetting all of it now. Yeah. Was there a final report on the festival? Financial report? Yes, it's no, more or less. Oh, just a summarization of everything that happened. Uh, you know, just like the youth panel and you know you that would be Carlos, something that you know. we could maybe put together I, we're, there's going to be a big like debrief meeting uh in, in early may okay. and maybe i could pitch that to the okay. we'll just uh, to take notes or something yeah i think some there is again, we'll yeah we say. did we did put some preliminary notes as the the, lead, the leadership team put like what worked well what you yeah know, kind of a plus delta what what would we want to change um how big a way did the publicity go for it? Did it How go to Rutland? Did it go to uh, well, Burlington? I mean, was it publicity? Yeah, I think mean, so. It was, we had uh, press in Vermont Public. Um, we seven had seven days. Seven days. We had okay. a couple of seven days. We had Times Argus did two articles. The Bridge did an article. Okay. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. if you're too local, you don't know what's going yeah. on in Rutland. Right, was, right. I, I, I have a, a follow up question. Sure, there. sure. The the debrief meeting. Who who is participating in that? Do you want to come? I 
what I'm curious about is uh, when we might be able to hear something on like the the returns financially. Right. Yes. This year That's versus still, past I'm years. I'm still working on that. Yeah. Oh, versus past years, that would be an interesting. Uh, I mean, if that is yeah. available, and and a report, and I would like to clarify clarity on who will be reporting this to us now since um since you will not be here sure let me take a note there oh right you're the bridge from the fiscal sponsor to the festival so, right, so. yes and and i have not had very open communications uh, a lot of times with with Hyvon since she took over Sure. Okay. So you're you're asking for who will uh, yeah report to the bridge person, right? It's important. Is 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 that is Python's position year round part time or it's sort of uh it's a contract. Of, yeah, it'll be contract. Um, it has been and will continue to be contracted. Yeah. Like as an but in terms of like how the time works is it part time throughout the year or is it like a seasonal year where she gets busy it's and seasonal that's what it's, it's like, like it'll go quiet yeah until like yeah. september october october yeah we started everybody really I, I think started getting paid our contractors maybe october november the programmer was hired in december which was kind of late and then through march yeah okay so so sort, sort of a half year yeah. cycle maybe year. yeah yeah okay thank you um, so, Chad, yeah. in terms of the bridge, I I did talk with Paivon, and so in terms of maintaining this fiscal sponsor and mm -hmm. having that piece and doing the admin, so it would be like I would still be doing the financials or the admin portion of that, and that would still maintain. In terms of what type of relationship we would have with the Green Mountain Fold Festival and how much administrative assistance and outreach assistance we would be able to provide, I did tell her, you know, we don't have, like, I think even back when the first time when the Green Mountain Film Festival came around as an idea, we said we don't have a lot of capacity to do a lot for the Green Mountain Film Festival. So we're happy to do the fiscal sponsor and do some of the admin, but some of that. And I was like, you know, and I did let her know, like, we also aren't going to, we may not have the capacity to do a lot of interfacing as much as Christopher did. I don't think we would, we would have that space to do that. So whether, that relationship and more of like, you know, like that for this first year, because things were unclear, like we, there was more interaction, but now it's a whole year has been gone through. I would imagine that their organizational structure and their leadership structure might be a little bit put together so that those jobs would mm -hmm. be kind of held in the Green Mountain Film Festival. So that really, it may be that we just are doing the bank account and, and we're also, I was talking to her about having her more, give her more access to her the Green Mountain Film Festival account so that they could look at it without having to contact us and be like, what's the balance? If, you know, we're cutting these checks. Is it going to be okay? So a little, adding a little bit more autonomy to their interactions and their running of the organization so that it wasn't a huge, it wouldn't be a huge lift for us from going out from here on out, but that also it may not be needed because they have, you know, you would think that they've got that structure all kind of put together. And this year was kind of a test run and but now that they might have it. So what there. is the structure? It's it's is it its own entity as a uh, incorporated body, the Green Mountain Film Festival, well, or is it on is it sponsored projects? So that's like they have an executive director, even though it's, she is contracted and and part time. But then they also, I would imagine, like so when the festival happened, they had the sponsorship manager, they had a yeah. programmer, they had um, the executive director, and then how they decide and there was the advisory board. So I I thought that the, it would be kind of like like a not a baby or but an organization with the you know leadership team like Christopher was talking about. Mm -hmm. The advisory board kind of works as the board part to kind of over I that's kind of like what I whether that's the actual organizational yeah. structure. Yeah I'm just trying to figure out is it it does it is it under us? Is it is it our so it's 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 not necessarily like that. I mean, I think an advisory board board is just that. It was part of that transitional period of taking on the festival and offering some guidance as to, you know, people out in the field, what how do we advise this thing that was mm -hmm. in its infantile state? Um the board of or the orca board is is the 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 board that oversees this in the end because it's a fiscally sponsored project, but a, a fiscally sponsored project has 
that independent relationship like mm -hmm. you're saying so yeah it's that i think it's technically some kind of like fiscally sponsored model c if is they, the legality ride, they ride on our nonprofit exactly status. so that yeah anytime anybody gives money to the green mountain film festival they could write it off using the orca media eia number but it's a deep we have a dba that, you know green mountain film festival is its own thing um, okay so so but it isn't an incorporated body it's is it no. Uh, it's Orca Media, DBA, Green Mountain Film. No, Festival. it's just, it's just. Well, yes, the DBA is it is an assumed name owned by Orca Media, but on, uh, as far as anyone's concerned, a fiscally sponsored project legally is just its own independent project. The Green Mountain Film Festival. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not like you. But but if you're fiscally name, sponsor, sponsoring a project, then it has to be for someone or something. Um, so like if I had a project with my company and I wanted a fiscal sponsor, then they would handle the um, donations like you're saying and then pay out the donations to my company Typically. For, as a granting sort of um, uh, arrangement, but I exist as an LLC myself. Yeah, so sure. That, I, that's that's, that's just what I'm asking is, is yeah. so is it a, a, a discrete entity uh, or is it is it part of ORCA? Uh, it's the first one, yes. But I, I will say that every I've looked at several MOUs and fiscally fiscal sponsorship agreements, and they're all different. I mean, a, a more conventional style would be that every all the money comes into Orca, and then Orca distributes it monthly or something like that. In this case, Orca, almost like a parent, like Jin saying, has a sub checking account that is the Green Mountain Film Festival. And Paivon is managing that with Jin and Zach's eyes on it, right? So it's more like they're they're even more independent than that. I mean, we it could change in the future, sure. That's that's up to the two organizations. So Our MOU yeah. goes to twenty six. Yeah, and and then also I'll also add Michael and I were talking about this earlier, but Chad, you're probably familiar with. Typically, the the benefit of having that relationship is that there's an admin fee. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're for using that EIN number and for parenting this independent organization, but this independent project. Um, but when Green Mountain Film Festival was coming back to the community, the agreement in the the MOU that we all signed or whatever, or, or, or landed on was that there will, will be no admin fee until 2026. So that's where, where it is right now. After that, there could be a 10% admin fee. So all the money that Green Mountain Film Festival comes in brings in that that ten, we would take 10% of it, right? <clears throat> so that's, in that case, it might be a different kind of, that's an example. I mean, it, it, I've seen seven to 12%, but- yeah, Five to five to, yeah, 10. Yeah, I mean, as far as like uh, how it, yeah, I guess, does that answer your question? So if we're responsible for doing oversight of the film festival, mm -hmm. who is going to be presenting to us so that we can oversee it? Right, I, I, it would be by bond. Okay. Um, yeah. So would that be a board meeting, board invitation? Yeah, but it might. It may only be twice a year. So. Well, it might yeah. just be June. Like it might just be June. Like yeah, the, the debrief, the digest. Yeah. The, what did we learn? Sure. The here's what yeah. we know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, would you have some sort of schedule for it? Yeah. So I have a question. Did we take time, Orca Media, to kind of um, inform the public? You know, there was a lot of people, right? So the it was Orca's presence there notable? Did, were, were there people there to talk about what Orca Media does? That's a things good that question. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that Jen and Zach were there. Did you guys go to the film festival? We didn't. We did the streaming portion. Sure. So we had a we had our, mm -hmm. our camera operators there. We had uh, we were we were supporting the Green Mountain Film Festival in that capacity. I know that whenever I. Uh, spoke to anybody I was representing, both Orca Media and the Green Mountain Film Festival, and we had a lot of conversations. I know Chad was there as a Orca Media right. board member and a Green Mountain Film Festival advisory board member. So there was a lot of overlap. Sean yeah. as well. Sean was, you know, okay. yourself. So I mean, like, there was a lot of shared people, yeah. I think. And, you know, but um, I feel like, yeah, like a missed opportunity to, to have a little table with a banner sure, and kind yeah. of, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of say, you know, we have this, these are the things we have up at the hill. I think you notice year one. Kind of right. Part of that not taking 
uh, administration fees was particularly like, yay, you're back. Let us help you get on your feet. Sure, sure. Revisit in 2026. Right. Um, can we get me the question of that little email back and forth mm -hmm. about like um, that was it a rumor or it was on a Slack that uh, Green Mountain Film Festival was leaving our fiscal sponsorship turned out to be not true, but could it legally do so? Could the you know child leave the parent? Absolutely. And yeah. Go go. Yeah. You know, say I'm emancipated now, or like what? Yeah, I mean that's that's the the freedom that you have as a as a project. You don't you have no you're not beholden to the the um the fiscal sponsor the fiscal agent. Mm -hmm. Um, the MOU typically would would hold you probably to some kind of end date. Um, right. And then at which point you can make it another MOU or you know, maybe they try, there could be a, a fee in, you know, if you leave early, you pay hundred well, dollars, you know, yeah. They could just get their own nonprofit status and just that could happen them. at any they point. They could find yeah. a different funding <laughs> sponsor or they could continue. Yes, to and that does happen. Yeah. Their, so those would be their three yeah. options. Yeah. The reason the 2026 thing is like, yeah. it's a real option. And to clarify yeah. the rumor, it was less of a rumor and more of like, we were just trying to figure out what, what the best, uh, future was for it and it um part of it was just uh exploring that option because Pai Bon as executive director of the Center for Arts and Learning already manages uh, a handful of fiscally sponsored projects under her organization so it felt like um to just kind of move it with towards Pai bon. but then I think when Jin and Pai bon and I all talked about it like together or separately, it was like, it makes sense to just kind of stick with the agreement we had. And I think, um, so it was part of like, I had scheduled to talk with Pavon just because with Christopher leaving, it's like, what are, you know, what are some nitty gritty bits that we need to kind of clarify whose role, where does it fall, what needs to get changed? And so that conversation was scheduled to happen. And whether that was, you know, that where it's like that conversation maybe came more of like, do we take it or, and. I figured like it wasn't surprising because I was like Cal does that's like some something that they do as part of their style of business. Whereas we, you know, we were offering the fiscal sponsorship because we were trying to be nice and we thought it was important and we wanted to help out, but it's not necessarily something that we've really investigated and really come up with a process to be, you know, financial sponsors and have that be a revenue source. So it it wasn't like if they wanted to move it, I feel like, you know, we're, I feel like we're here to help them. And if they were like, we're ready to be our own entity and our own, not that it's like, we, I was going to say, you know, it's fine. You can go, how can we help you? But she was applying for some grants. And so she was like, you know, it would be easier if we could just stay. And I was like, that's fine too. So I think it was just, you know, it was a, a you know, things are changing. How, how can we still help? Do we, do you need us in the same way kind of conversation? Oh, so. I, do, I forgot that there was a sense of urgency last week because of the grant that she needed to apply for and it was like okay well we need to make a decision either way so i think that was why it was a little uh back and forth sorry yeah. that was confusing more and so like could we we could like i i would deduct deduce based on the the uh chain of events though that in 2026 it will be going to cal i don't know i mean i think that pi bonds hope is that since her fiscal sponsorship program is so locked in and she charges seven percent she's also trying to save money wearing the, the uh festival director's hat for the green mountain film festival and if orca media only charges five percent or something or like going forward continues to offer something i mean yeah it doesn't i don't think that it's set in stone yeah also i will say that uh it wouldn't hurt to look at the the program that five on already has uh since it is a local fiscal sponsored model c program that she offers to that her organization offers it's i think something that she replicated from another local nonprofit so you can see oh maybe we should be doing something that we're not we're asking for something that we're not doing. right and I, I guess it's worth noting that even though we haven't charged administrative fees we've definitely dedicated labor right right there's mm -hmm. been the in kind your capacity yeah. is sort of wearing both hats yes but yeah. um that's that's, that's real you know I, I i would consider that a fork as investment in mm -hmm. absolutely the yeah. future of the festival when we so when we started it 
there was they didn't have an executive director or anything. Right. right. And I would be careful using an executive director because yeah. maybe that could confuse the fact that they're not a nonprofit, right? That they're just a project. So they really like they have a project. Oh, right. so, yeah, yeah. So you kind of took on an old phone. Right. So I was that transitional yeah. president. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it gets it gets like oh, the language really matters. Like, sure, yeah, executive yeah. director means that they're uh, yeah, executive right. director means at this point the co-directors and board of directors means you guys and advisory board means yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and it, but I I think it you know it came out clean, Dave. Sorry, I was going to ask: Is there any uh, now that we're battling school budgets in almost every school? Mm -hmm. Is there any part of that tension? That redounds to uh, difficulties for things that we're trying to do with education. Orca Media or the Green Line? Orca, no, Orca Media. Um, we had the Youth Documentary Lab, but we had got some educational money too, didn't we? No or education. Was it all separate? So I think if you're thinking of like that first year, maybe the first year of the Youth Documentary Lab, there was a summer grant uh -huh. that was received and that kind of so we, I think that's part of the um, the co-directors report where we talked about like the youth documentary lab because that is a project of Christopher's that will be closing out, and we have the summer camp of the Make TV and Film Camp this year. So we kind of we developed our own in-house youth programming as well. So that summer grant was for the youth documentary lab where I think Rob had fronted the youth documentary lab with some Orca money to get it going. And then the grant came and was like covering the cost of it. So it, but it lives right now. That's why it lives in that youth documentary lab account, but it will be once that's gone, then it comes right back into the Orca checking because we actually hadn't pulled out the repayment of the grant because we were like, this project still lives. We'll like let the grant money stay in there until it's done. And then now, because we did front, Orca did front the money for the summer program, the Youth Documentary Lab, and the grant money was to cover that, it will come back to us. But, to but Dave's, we, oh, sorry. To, well, to Dave's question, that grant did not come from the local budget. school budget. Yes. Or, yeah, no, 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 it was an after school, it was a yeah. grant money. And I think it was back when COVID, there was a ton yeah. of money sure. in and trying to push forth the after school grant, but it wasn't part of the budget or anything like that. I don't know that. Just we, the fact that every time there's a school meeting, there's another meeting after it. And meanwhile, there's, they're chopping every little thing that's a little bit weird out of the budget. And I just didn't know whether any of the things that we've done or are doing are going to get chopped to pieces and dropped because they're trying to cut another million or half a million. Our, our outreach to the schools has been no charge to this point so yeah as of, i mean um yeah so at, at, at maybe yeah you're right i mean there's there could be a future where flexible pathways is cut at certain schools and that's typically the the, the program that we work with well, i'm also thinking of parental panic because many of the things that they thought were part of the educational plan in the schools are going to be dropped and they may be looking to a place like Orca to even yeah. cover that. I mean, speak, you know, do, do programs about it. Yeah. Or how do you pick up the extras that children used to get when they were in the school with all the programs now that they're no longer being, now being cut? It may be an issue for right, a future right. board discussion. That's all yeah, I'm saying. That could be an issue in the future. And it could be an opportunity, I think, that if they're looking for after school programming, if they're looking because that got cut, or if there was like, some of like maybe they don't have the funds to get the news cameras if they were doing some sort of film project within the, the middle school then maybe we could be like hey you know if you don't have the money for those resources we have those resources let's come up with a plan to like maybe come here and use them until you know the funding maybe comes back or if it isn't so we could be there to be that resource when the shortfall happens that they weren't able to get all the equipment okay. that they might plan for thank you and I guess just to wrap up some of this outreach stuff, I, I'll just mention quickly that Zach will take over uh, working with some of my students and the connections with the schools um, that are currently ongoing. And the, like Jen mentioned, the Make TV camp will happen this summer, and Sean is taking the lead uh, on that, which is great. So, and you're leaving curriculum behind and there's sort of a structure in place already. He will be. Yeah, Sean's been actually part of that since the beginning. So he's, he's, so he's lived through it. Yeah, he has uh, muscle memory. But I did pass on everything I had so far. 
that one's been a little bit more play it by ear, but it's 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 been mostly like pre-production to post-production, uh, mm -hmm. get through the week and have fun. Yeah, provide lots of snacks. Yeah, have budget fun. budget for snacks. That's what we learned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's it on my end for outreach. If anyone wants to take over. So I, have a, more questions. I have a question yeah. um, so Zach in terms of and Christopher in terms of the current student U32 student mentorship what exactly is that in the, with the one with the Main Street Middle School so the first one the U32 yeah. student mentorship uh, that's through flexible pathways is the state program that's yep. their specific they have three levels and this is a pilot student who works independently on a project year round and this is a student named Willow She's uh, doing a documentary film, short documentary film, uh, really great student. She's been doing a good job. Um, and so let's see, I forget when we started working together, but uh, yeah. maybe in January. Fall. Yeah, I it was fall. No, you're right, it's fall. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, she's towards the tail end of her project. So Zach is stepping up. I believe Zach will do the pa paperwork to be an official mentor, but right now, Sean is on staff as official men mentor uh, with U32. So that's good. And they they come over here either or you they all come over here. here. Yeah. yeah. And I'll, either or, I think sometimes Sean has worked with a student over there. But in yeah. my case, they're coming. The other one, um, Main Street Middle School, that's just getting started, but a little bit more uh, led by the, the teacher there who's doing a, a short video series documenting like a maker's fair that they're running through May. Okay. So we've provided equipment um, and basically are showing up as like professional feedback. So give them like equipment to hold on for a longer period. Of time yeah. 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 Um, any other questions? Are we advertising for a replacement of you? That would be up to you all. I, I really don't know. Yeah. It is on the agenda. I was I'm sorry, say. I didn't see it in the agenda. <laughs> we would have to accept the co-director's report to get right. that item. Okay. I think maybe it would be good to mention this. this. I move that we go to the co-director's report. <laughs> well, this is we're still in the co-director's report. Do we want to just finish this up? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah think, but we're getting close. Yes, we are. I think the last couple bits is we are Sean has come up, so I think to help with some of the um, the gap, we have been giving, we're planning on having Sean do a little bit more time inside the office and help out with post-production, help out with the student teaching, as well as like the community producers. If um, So he will be probably around a little bit more. And I think um, the other bit- Is, is he essentially a full-timer for the foreseeable future? So we're or? planning on using him to the 30 hour mark. And then, um, so like he's a camera operator. So his schedule was a little bit more fluid where it, but now we're like, if we have the budget space to be able to say, you know what, we can use you for 30 hours. We have stuff to do. So we'll have you for some cameras, if, but then we're always gonna book you for 30 hours a week. And so that has been different than like we aim, but it was because it's mostly camera operator work and and post production, whatever's in the budget. So I think he knows. We also spoke to him saying, you know, if you we're going to use you for thirty hours, and then he did sh express interest in applying for the position of the community engagement when that comes around. And so he, um, but we did say, you know, until we did tell him that we're still working out the job description, how that is going to split, if it's going to split, and so. But in that meantime, we'll use you for the 30 in doing the student, the community producer training, the student, the student training, the post-production. So just like operational support is what we've been calling it. And so we will be using him for that piece. And the three of you met with Pam and some of that shaping up the job descriptions, looking at the, like the very beginning of the co-directors model, I, I guess you just kind of cannibalized Rob's job description and gave it to each other. Right, right. And then you had a more recent sit down to say like, what is actually happening in real time or these cohesive, it yes. sounds like there's yeah. a, and I think Pat, you, you timeline that out even a little bit about when sort of the 
So I think we were going to talk about Pat, our discussion with Pat during the code record right. opening. Okay. Okay. So I'm Jump just going to try to close out the, <laughs> sorry, I'm just going to try to close out the um, code director's report. So the last bit is the statewide. So our bill got passed. So S-181, which is a streaming tax. So the Senate passed it unanimous. It's heading over. I think there was some, like it's right now assigned to the House Energy and Environment, but there Want, the advocacy group wants it to be within the House and Ways and Means. So it was told it was a mistake to put it there for right now, but it's moving. So there was some advocacy work of, I think Christopher emailed like our reps to let them know, you know, it's, this mm -hmm. bill's coming. We'd like you to support it. It's We'd like it to be in Ways and Means. And so that is, so the, the advocacy group wanted us wanted um, Van to create like a, a buzz, like a very light buzz about our bill. So that's where that is. And I guess on terms of the board, like with the Senate, there was like an action alert that went out to all of you about, you know what, we're going to need you to call the the, set, the sergeant at arms, we're going to need you. So that's going to also be happening similarly with the House reps. And so it may be, and because the reps are so many more, that we might... I think what we're asking the board is to think of your location and people that you might know that you can we can email and say, hey, can you call us, call the sergeant in arms to support our bill that you know that they might be like that can help. And then also, if you know any of the legislators within your division or your area, if that's something that you're like, oh, I do know them, we have this great relationship that would be good to know. And so that we may be tapping you on the shoulder and being like, hey, you know, this, that, and the other. So we just want you to be aware that alerts or action items might be coming down the line that we might be tapping you and saying, okay, you know, this is helpful if you could help do this. So I think with Christopher leaving that at the sea, like I've been going to the meetings, but we may be using the board a little bit more in that realm of the advocacy portion of it. Mm -hmm. Because saying, you know, we figured you know tons of people, maybe more than just Zach and I, and especially within your geographic location in the service area, that I think will be, because ours is so big, like we wouldn't want only Montpelier people to call, but so the East Randolph and the Randolph, and <laughs> that, I say, you're East Montpelier, aren't you, Dave? Yes. So that's, you know, if, because they did mention that the legislators know who's in their in their area and who and so those names will make a difference. So having the East Montpelier people call the East Montpelier rep will make a difference. So I think um, right now we're not asking anyone to do anything, but I thought it's good to give you the heads up that this is coming down the line. So that if there was any questions about what the bill means or what's happening with the bill or anything like that, you know, let us know. Generally, the advocacy group has been really good about here's the script to use. So they've given us the text of what they kind of want us to tell whoever we're asking to call. So we should hopefully, we will give you a, you know, a lot of information or what to tell your people to say or do or call when they call. So hopefully that will make it much easier. I think having that script is, it's been helpful for us to, know what to say. I've seen a, <clears throat> online ads from the other side where it's just you press a button and it's a pre-written email to the rep saying, you know, I don't want another tax, especially on my screen. Right, right. So they're, they're mm -hmm. I mean, they are well healed and well organized. And um, I think when, when we say it passed, it passed the Senate. It's it passed the Senate. Through the yeah. House. And this, it needs a governor's signature on it. Yeah, so and I think the advocacy people were saying, like, you know, because it's a tax, I don't think that they're necessarily thinking it's going to pass. So it's like, I think they're preparing for the veto session, too. So I think that's where also it is, you know, it was great that the Senate was unanimous in passing it. So I think that was very hopeful. And so with the, the reps, if it's... I think it may be like that's where they're prepping us and getting us kind of ready early so that we are ready to make all those calls or catch all the like talk to those people. Mm -hmm. So I think um, because I think, yeah, the streaming folks are spend like even when the Senate, they were saying like they're spending monies to do robo calls to. And so I think it is, you know, they there is a move. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Dave, yeah. Um, when I when we when I was director at the family center in Morrisville, we lost a Chris type person 
uh, we tried to find some way to uh, have the person that left uh, be occasionally an independent contractor or paid consultant. And I don't think the auditors liked it at all, but I just wondered whether we will have the, the skills that are out there available to us if we need to hire somebody like Chris to come back as a paid consultant on an issue or to, to, to talk to a new intern about what they need to know. I'm just wondering whether that's something within our possibilities. I would imagine it could it is, be, of course. <laughs> it could be. I think that we do have, like with with Zach and Sean doing the training, and so a lot of stuff. I think we will be able to, and I think where the community and Sean has shown has said he's got interest in doing the community engagement and reaching out. So it's um that was when we talked to him, we wanted to make sure that was something that he would feel comfortable doing. So I think hopefully. And we'll get to it in the co-director yeah, opening. The I was like, <laughs> it was only so, an idea. I wasn't actually recommending. But so we're going to have to uh, dig into that in, in the next section. Better, shall I entertain a motion to approve co-director's report so we can get to that? I um, motion to That's accept. No motions to accept the co-director's report. I second. And there is a second. Uh, all those in favor of... Uh, Approving the code director's report, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. And aye. opposed. And we got there. Uh, code director opening strategic planning update. We've had a few, a couple hints at it. Now we can lay it right on the table. So, um, there, like with the circles and the co directorship, we did essentially take the executive director job description and job duties and split them across the three of us and saying that we kind of like within our full-time staff position we did hold certain parts of it and so we said you know it's it's it can be done where we could take some of those those <laughs> job descriptions and and take ownership of them and make the co-director positions and so i think christopher's was the community engagement piece where it was a full-time staff position to start off with and then with the director part, we added in some of the advocacy, some of maybe a little bit more, more community outreach and maybe some fundraising, more like taking point on fundraising kind of pieces of the executive director position. So now that it's back open, the, I think we've been having some conversations of, do we go back to a full-time staff position of the community engagement like it was before and then we have, and you know, we know the budget is tight, so we're looking at really just using the salary that um, Christopher had, and that would be the amount of money or the pool of money that we have to either find a new person that would do both, or if we split it out to have like the community engagement, like staff position, and the extra month would be maybe a part time out the outreach person. And so that was part of the discussion and conversations that we had when we sat with Pat about job descriptions. What is it that we do? What are the things that we find hard? Where do we struggle? Um, what bandwidth do we really have? And so with Zach and I, like we are maxed out on our, our time off and it would be lovely to be able to take it. And we started to talk about like, Orca Media used to be a four full-time position organization. And then we we brought it down to three where it was Zach, me, and Rob. And then we were back up to four. So that bandwidth of, you know, Orca can hand, like might have enough for four full-time people to be busy with. Or it could be that you have three people that, and we did the three and we were busy and we took, you know, and we also had, ideas of moving the, the organization forward. So it wasn't, we were trying to trying to thrive and trying to do more that maybe it wasn't being done before. So, I mean, we came up with like, what is the bandwidth? So it's like, we do need, I think Zach and I talked and said, we do need a third full-time staff person that is there for operational support. So I think one of the things, you know, it'd be lovely to be able to say, you know, Right now we are open from 11 to 7, and if we had three that we might be able to say, I might have two nights off, Zach might have two nights off, the third person might have two nights off that they don't have to work till 7.
but it gives us like there's more staffing to be able to be a little bit more flexible about you know how many of us are doing the late nights how many can maybe do the morning so it would be having that third full-time person would give us that freedom to be able to take some time off and things are still covered and I think the other bit is um and so in terms of I don't know if Pat wanted to also talk about what we like in terms of the meetings with the job descriptions and the two pieces and whether it is um, like the part-time and I think it is part of like if we were looking at that outreach part-time outreach it is not a lot of money that's in that piece because the full-time staff position I think was a fair amount of the salary amount that we had for the third position. So I think that's always, you know, it's like if it's not a lot of money for a part time person to do outreach, then, you know, do we just try to find someone who will do it for that money? Do we try to find more money or do we maybe start them off and say maybe if they bring in the grants to fund it? So I think those are those are topics that we talked about. Of, you know, if we do separate it out, what what is it that we could get for that money and what is it that I guess we really need and so that would be the other conversation of like I think we could we could still function as an organization with just Zach and me doing co-director stuff and I think we're you know and especially if we had someone that did community engagement but I think the question also comes up to you know, what are your, I mean, this is part of strategic planning, like what dreams do you want the organ, like where do you see the organization? What's your vision for how, where we should be? I think we started to make those conversations of alternative revenue streams and, you know, start to think about um, production revenue. We started, you know, we did the school and the students and trying to increase that. So it comes to whether, you know, it's still, this model still works for the board to get to, the mission or the vision that you all had or have. So that's. So, so is this, um, it, at this point, and I'm not sure what exactly the, in the conversations you've had with Pat, is this a point where we have come to a, an appraisal point for the co-director model just in general, and as is currently envisioned split up in three? So I guess it can be, I'm leaving it open in terms of like, you know, ultimately if it can be an appraisal of what works or what doesn't work, it, can it still work with just two? Do we want to really invest some time to find a community outreach slash co-director person to fit just, you know, that one role? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it, that's why like that advertising for, what is it we are advertising for? Are we advertising for, the community outreach slash co-director, I feel like my pause in that is the the co-direct that role does have a lot of operational support in it. Like before with the executive director, if they didn't necessarily know how to run the cameras or do certain production it wasn't, it wasn't a it wasn't an issue because we were all, we had three people that did those types of things. But with this model, part of that was that knowledge of like post-production or the camera or being able to train the community producers because it had that piece in it. So that would be where like the search would be a little bit different if we're trying to find someone that is a community outreach slash co-director because that operational portion of it would exist and whether that piece is makes it harder to find an exec like someone to fit that role if it's if it is harder, that's why we're like, you know, if we separated it out, would that help make filling those roles a little bit easier? So I guess that's where the um, the conversations were around those types of pieces. So I don't know if I answered your question, Chad. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if that's for like a staff person to try to feel. I think your guys' job is to really ask yourself, did the model right. work? Like right. for you guys on the ground because that's what we don't know mm -hmm. um we i do know that there were like the points of conflict that may or may not have got resolved but any of the co-directors the it's like three people one brain in one way and maybe is that impossible or actually no we were actually finding our way to regularly communicate 
and iron out differences and set a path that was kind of like the best of everybody's talents were coming together because you know there's the philosophy of the co-directors model and then there's the reality you guys know the reality best mm -hmm. we are tasked right. with like hearing that and then making those decisions so i to put you in a position to feel that question had maybe as a board member who is who is closer to these conversations if you have some thoughts to help the board yeah. shape um the question really at this point because we could just go into a default setting and say we lost this person with this job description we go find someone with the skill set to fill that job description that would be the easiest default setting well, thing to do i think um, if i may we've we also had... have a fairly new model and i know i'm just i'm just getting I'm ready sorry, to see, i'm sorry over. we also have a, a fairly new model that we could say no default setting doesn't make sense let's thoughtfully look at how this model played out thank you for your patience pat no no problem sorry i hate zoom sometimes um, yeah it's all about so, the time. Yeah, it's terrible so i've been uh, spending quite a bit of time when chris um before he uh, put in his resignation um i was asked by by jim to come in and help a little bit with some uh things that uh, weren't working as smoothly as they should so um, I started working on job descriptions, and and um, then when Chris uh, put in his resignation, I worked the other day with um, individually with Jin and with uh, Zachary um, to talk about what their visions are, to talk about their job descriptions. Um, we're not totally on the same page yet, but we're working on it. Um, I think this is an opportunity to really look at the way things are. I think the co director model should work. It's only two people in a small organization. It shouldn't be a be a problem. Um, I think that with the if we add a third party, whether it be part time and then have him be um, working on working on the technical end of things, that should alleviate a lot of the issues in the office with support that would, in my mind, free up uh, opportunity for a community outreach person working part time. Um, I think it's doable. They're out there. And if we make it enticing enough, um, we could find somebody that uh, would do just community outreach and the other things that were, were talked about, nothing in the office because you have that third party. Um, we also talked about using the space a little more efficiently. That's a great office space. And I don't think it's being used well at all. It looks, it, it could look a little more professional when you walk in. And um, uh, that's actually one of the reasons I joined the facilities committee because um, I think we have to present ourselves a little more professionally. And we've got so many office spaces that we're using for part-time people, people to, and why are we doing that when we've got staff that should be in their own office with doors that can close and, and have meetings and um, you know, quiet and quiet meetings. So we have, we've been talking, I really want to thank Jen and, and Zach and Chris in the, before he resigned. We were, I thought we were working really towards a great solution. And I think in within two weeks, we should have a formal proposal for everybody that hopefully we're all on sync about and present it to the board. That includes uh, the impact on, on funding, includes job descriptions, includes a reorganization within the structure, within the office, and um, presenting um, a whole new orca. Um, and I, um, I, I, I think it's doable. Yes, sir. Thank you. Questions? Sure. I'd like, I, I have an idea that it may be time for us to do what a lot of other colleges have done. And I'm saying this because Goddard is now closing and there are a lot of other higher institutions that are in trouble. Right. Students want to learn it may be time for us to develop an internship of one, with one of the colleges that comes here and learns about the media and all the things that, that our, our organization is able to do. And the money comes from the school because we're working with Vermont Tech to right. offer this technical internship for a college student that is freaked out that they're not learning enough except from books and from the labs at VTC. That actually reminds me, I, I was wondering if the board um, and I, Apologize, Michael, I didn't talk to you about this. I've been updating Michael on everything that I've been up to. 
uh, just because I am a board member and I didn't want to surprise anybody. But we have yeah, your, an attorney. Your HR experience is just so well appreciated well, at this time. Thank you. Thanks. Um, it's been a while, but it's it's still there somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. I was hoping without spending a ton of money that I could contact our attorney. Jin gave me his name, somebody that we've used before, and I don't have it in front of me, I'm sorry, um, to ask him about fundraising and, and where the opportunities are for this nonprofit uh, on, on to make money, because I just think it's out there, just as you just mentioned, there's ways to make money and we shouldn't let it, um, we should pursue it. And I'd like to talk to an attorney. I don't think it would take much to, to mm -hmm. pick his brain about what opportunities we have without um, falling awry of the, of the public access laws. Um, uh, if I could do that, that would be excellent to make sure we cover our tracks and our legal when we're looking to make some money and fundraising. Yeah, I, I mean, I actually think we're quite generous in our reading of our our, our sort of our missions, uh, the the stuff we shouldn't charge for. I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot of things that in, in different and other and other access centers would be considered fee for service. But we yeah, I agree. Take I as, agree with you. I yeah. know some of them, but, and but I'm like, getting why? a lawyer involved to understand where that line is would be would be yeah, because I I honestly don't know. I I know this is something I don't know. And I'd like to find out about it. And so we make sure that if we are collecting money, that we're doing it legally and not getting in trouble with the public right. access the people. Driven work that we're, we're, we're charged to do. And Carlos. So, so, the, so what we're talking about is the directorship is something that in a few weeks, we're going to know what that's going to look like. Is this correct? And, and by, by oh. April, what, what's today? April, May 4th, I will, we'll have okay. a proposal ready for you all. I, I feel and this is a suggestion, like these items when we really discuss these things, I would feel feel free to move it up front and put it at the beginning of the meetings versus the end of the meetings. Yeah. Me right, because our brains are go. like <laughs> this. Yeah. I'm just putting it out there. Right. Yeah. right. And we one... don't meet till June and that makes okay, sense. Okay, so we can at. we shift the agenda so that the most important items should be at the top of the meeting? That's one thing. If you put that on, we'll I'll be there in person next time. I do actually have to sign off after this. One other thing I forgot is we were looking for one person on the board to, because we do have a co-director model, one person on the board to be the liaison between the board and staff. Um, I think that's an important mm. um, component um, to have. I, I feel uncomfortable being that person because I have a show and I'm a client sort of of Orca. So if somebody else would feel comfortable i'm glad i'm glad uh, carlos is shaking his head because i was <laughs> i was thinking of carlos <laughs> i see you carlos <laughs> but anyway that, that. yeah. that's that's part of the proposal yeah uh, will be that the board have, there's somebody that staff can call um to and and show up at meetings and that sort of thing and if we hire this com uh, community um uh, shoot i forget the name um community outreach person, there would be a requirement for if certainly in the beginning to be in the office to understand the the way things work and what is expected of him or her, but also to have mandatory weekly meetings, whether it be by Zoom or whatever, but to have meetings that, that happen. Mm -hmm. So we have a full-blown report that we'd like to present to you by, by May 4th. Thank you, Pat. Okay. Thanks. I have to. Thank I do have you. to. I have two requests. Uh, I just I stuck up my hand, but um, with the lawyer, and many of you know, I've been around for a long time, looking at money making opportunities for Orca and ways for us to support small business in Vermont, because we are an unusually small business and innovation oriented state, with few opportunities for young people who keep leaving. So, if you would be willing, if and if everybody's okay. I'd love to join you at that meeting to get a better understanding oh, directly. Absolutely, CJ. I would love it. That'd be great. <laughs> okay. The, great. More the, the more the merrier. You've got my back. I've got yours. That'll work. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. I really appreciate the work you've done on the audit. The only other thing is um, Jen and I have worked uh, together on a lot of the financial stuff. She's done a fantastic job. And uh, so I just wanted to put in a word on that. But uh, in Mike Gabadi's been very tolerant of Jen and I just directly communicating with our financial work together 
um, I'm just sticking it out there both as a public recognition that Zach and Jen have been fantastic to work with both and that uh, I never had as much of a chance to work with Chris, but um, but Jen's ideas have been super and and uh, and they're responsible for some of the better things that Orca's got right now. But um, if uh, so is the idea that I would then work through the liaison um, to to do that in the future? No, 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 no. I, I didn't now? see that. You'd be working directly with Jin as usual. Yeah, I I wouldn't see any change in your relationship, CJ, because it's working. Why okay. mess it? If it ain't broke, oh. don't fix it, right? Hey, I'm I'm happy to do whatever works. I just, uh, okay, but I figured it's a nice time to say kudos. Well, thanks, thanks a lot for everything y'all are doing. No problem. If the board's okay with my re reaching out to the attorney, I will do that and include CJ in the discussion. Good. Okay. I do have we're to go and I apologize, but I yeah. must sign off. All right. Okay. Thank you all very have a good much. Night. See you. Thank Bye. You. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. I can so, figure out where to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. it's 801. That's, yeah. That's got a good eye for the clock. It is 801. So go ahead. I, I think one thing as as board members, right? As we as we before we meet the next time, I think one thing that we should think about is, you know, what are the what are the things that we want from our executive directors, right? You know, kind of that wish list of things, right? And and that kind of could help us guide guide us towards what is this going to look like moving forward into the future, right? right. I think that's I think that's important. Yeah, to I think mean, about these things. We're in a very funny place because we right. we have a strategic planning sort of kind of launched. I know. Yeah, correct. Our mission statement is literally still in suspended animation. We word spent that thing and, to death and we never put it right, there. Correct. I thought we had a nice one and people got yeah. even more creative and we had not pulled the trigger on correct. that. I mean, I'm getting into old business now, but I just, you know, the list is long. Um, correct. We have not had a circles meeting since strategic planning. Something happened in that one January off meeting where I thought that was going to be the that's the meeting we're going to launch strategic planning. So we've been in suspended animation for quite a while, and I get the sense it's because the co-directors had some sorting to do, and it is now sorted out. Um, Chris, wish you well. Um, you know, I don't know if in a, a different timeline the sorting had worked differently, but um, I totally get. But I think. It's, Congratulations, that's, that looks like a really great uh, move. But we are left with a lot of loose ends that are, that oh. are at least six to eight to 10 months. If we, and just, I, if we yeah. just timeline out from last summer decisions right. that, we're, that we're just, we're, there's been yeah. a lot of unfold triggers. And I think these triggers are gonna still stay that way until we read this one thing is yeah, the most that, pressing. That's the other thing is right. Like so, this is so I, 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 I don't, or whatever it is, whatever it's gonna look like. On the post whatever it's gonna look like amazing. first. I think that needs to be resolved. And then that really we need to put our, our attention on this. And then from there, then we can move on. Ha having a, a plan, yeah. right? Yeah, agreed, agreed. But talk about all those future grants that somebody's supposed to write right, right. at some point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I hear exactly what you're saying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, more on strategic planning. I I'm hearing May fourth. I don't know if there, we we ought to have some sort of impromptu Zoom sometime in mid May. May May maybe fourth is a Saturday. Yeah. Well, Pat just set that for her yeah. personal deadline. I'm I'm saying. Um, just using the date she used, and um, and boy, talk about a loose ends. We also have like <laughs> annual meeting in May. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. that's something we're trying to get off our COVID timeline with the uh, annual meeting falling into yeah. the fall in 2020. And us, us, and by bylaws, it's supposed to be a spring meeting, <laughs> and the election of officers is supposed to happen the following that June meeting. So um, we are, you know, it's it's a pile. Is that going to say for the old business? I was hoping that we come up with a date in May that works, so we can actually. Because I looked through the old notes and I didn't see like it was. I thought it was agreed that we would do our annual meeting in May, and I didn't find a date for it. So. Yeah, I don't think we set one. I think we okay. just we committed to being, you know, not reporting out on. The year prior in the in the fall, which is like 
we're almost through the year we're in. Like there's a reason it should be a spring meeting. And I, I totally understand why um, um, COVID pushed us back, but it's, you know, it's 2024 and we're, we're trying to get on a regular rhythm. But yes, we do need a May what? I'm trying to think. Traditionally, we've done it on a Thursday. I mean, maybe even early June, if that just buys people time, given that all the other shoes that need to drop. But uh, looks like Memorial Day is the 27th. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's. And it wouldn't have to be a big hullabaloo. I mean, if we had one was the 2021 was literally a. a Rob put together a PowerPoint and we present, you know, we recorded it and it, it, it sufficed as an annual meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go that thin, but mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had expansive versions. The John Mock Memorial version was was quite expansive. That's but, pretty good. Um, yeah. you know, something something that checks the box, but it's not something more than a slideshow. I don't know how the 30th looks. This is it's the last Thursday of the month. But I think we we leaned on Thursdays for for this. So I need to leave soon, and I am okay whatever date everybody decides. So I will just check um the meeting notes, uh, but I need to leave now. So nice seeing everyone. Have a good night. Okay. Nice yeah. Sure. Bye -bye. Here. Good night, Taylor. Bye. Oh. I think that Thursday for me works out. So. That Thursday? Yeah, and that's really like, if, if staff feels like, okay, we can put something together by then, mm -hmm. get the word out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's good. Are you a, yeah. And it's not mm -hmm. even. Yeah. So Jack's we, making noises. What <laughs> it's our food, yeah. Yeah, annual meeting thirtieth of May. And what time frame? Are you? Talking? What you've done like a four thirty to six thirty or something? Generally? Yeah, it was just like two hours. Late afternoon to early evening. The calendar. I think previously it was like five to seven. Was two thousand last year's was five to seven. Um, because there's been some five to eight, so we could aim for like a five to seven again. Is that? I just wrote in a five to seven on the thirtieth, but I can change it. But that sounded fine to me. Five to sign, yep. And yeah. So, what about space? Is there anything changing on this uh, compound that we're a part of? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to be part of new pass proposal. <laughs> no, I'm just talking about the college. The oh, college yeah, the big picture here. space. Yeah, no, yeah, I have no idea what whether Prescott's coming here or what. Um, the college that we're doing things with in way. It was a gateway program. Cal Arts. Oh, oh BCFA yeah. and Cal Arts are now in a partnership. Yeah, but our landlords Greenway Institute is been it's they're they're the ones that are taking our fee yeah yeah and they're in the buildings but in terms of activities i haven't heard that anything has been going on or changing it's been they they've responded to our request for landlord like if there was something going on they've been really quick about it and they've been really responsive so they've been great mm -hmm. you know the only reason i ask is that i don't even know if there's anything like a graduation that happens here oh no no, BCFA hasn't had a graduate. No, I just I yeah, thought maybe yeah. be, now that they're making a bonding with another college or something like that, they might want they're, to do something. They're out of Vermont for good. Yeah, they're just going to be in okay. California. Even yeah. college. All so, college yeah. All, yeah. So the green will be That's great. within a lease back in the office just to keep just office space here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I just wanted to try to figure out what May, May 30th will be this year. It, it seems like it's not going to be the way it always was on May 30th. Just because of things changing, mm -hmm. there'll be no Goddard. I can't believe there's no Goddard. Yeah, I know. The will be very minimal. Yeah, we'll not be. I know. 
Well, landlord will be a it'll be a tenant, right? Yeah. You could probably get discount rates in the Goddard campus. That's what I was thinking. But it's playing field. I'm not a liar. Why would it be a date? Our next proper board meeting on the fourth Tuesday would be the 25th of June. Um, so it's high that's, school graduation, isn't it? Well, that's getting yeah. late for high school graduation. That's late. Um, so that is just the classic default for Tuesday. June 25th. Huge morning five is a the old time. I don't even know where I'm going to be. The new time of 601. 601 never existed. I saw it. Hypo. I saw it. I don't think it's okay. You're good. I'm not going to let it go, huh? No, I just it's want to be on time. time. It's time to let that go, Dave. No, I'm old 630 enough. it is, yes? Yeah, I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here. Okay. We're I'm going to be in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, that's when the, Yeah. you guys are competing in the Nationals. Yeah, yeah. Congrats. What do you do in the Nationals? My students go compete in video film production movie. They won the states. Yeah. It, and it's air conditioned at that time of year. <laughs> it's actually last year. I was there last year also. It was actually very nice. Yeah. Okay. It's just, it's it was just very nice. Awful hot time to begin the south. No, it's very nice. Well, well, that's that's, that's why you're so coy about which group was yours. Oh. Is that for the Skills USA? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> very good. Chad was one of the judges. Oh, I'm not being coy. I'm just. Yeah, impartiality. Oh, whoa, whoa. Secrets. Secrets. No, no safety. Dollars no safety in the. Jeez. <laughs> Carlos is naturally boy. We may be, we may be losing the thread here, folks. Okay. Is there any. Is there any as outfit? much as I can, I'm trying to always. Be right, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. I would. I, I didn't mean it as a criticism. I know, I know. I'm like, okay, yeah, that that makes sense now. <laughs> it makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> um, we yeah. nailed down two dates pending May and June. Um, old business, new business. So new business. My students actually, you know, they for their video, they have a, a thank you to Orca Media because Orca Media. Um, facilitated by offering the facilities to work around oh, no. while they're shooting their videos, but they really appreciate it. And, and they did a pretty interesting job. I thought it was pretty interesting what they did. Great. So, and they won the states. And they won the states. Congrats. Is there any yeah. new business in Van? Reporting out Vans. I think that's all we got for, for now yeah. with what was in the co director's report. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The annual meeting's coming up. The Yeah, we're all welcome to Middlebury on the Ooh, Friday. first Friday and hey. Friday the third. Yeah. That is a uh, gratis, right? We just say we want to go and we go. Pat's going. That's the annual van meeting. Um, Chris, you'll be going and, and Matt, go ahead. River capacity. We will yes, work a staff present. What date is it? I directors. Think one of us will go. We're just trying to figure out whose okay. schedule is going to allow for okay. it. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, third? third, third, third. May third. Yeah. So oh, Millbury College, the alumni hall. I can send it in. I think you bounced it around. Oh, I did. Yeah, you did. Any any other businesses, or we can look at the clock and adjourn at eight fourteen. I see nodding. Motion. Sounds motion. So motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Team for Carlos. Yeah. Any, any seconds? We don't technically we, have to second it. Thank you to second you people that are out there in Zoom. Yeah, adjourn. Adjourn <laughs> 14. I don't think this is anybody. Take care, Zoomers. <laughs>